Can I have everybody's attention for a second? So, some people in the community took a lot of time to put together petitions, okay? And although tonight we don't have, um, there's no, uh, we've already done the public testimony phase, I just want to let everybody know who put this together, that we received it, we have the copies, and the counselors will have the copies, it was all emailed to them, so if anybody's curious whether we all got it, I just want to let you know we all got it, okay? Sound good? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we are, we're all curious up here because we're just, we're curious. So who has the laser uh, sign on the building? Because we all voted, it was pretty cool. <laughs> Way to go. Should we do that for Main Street? <laughs> like, no parking for a snow van or something? <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our city, Congress City Council regular scheduled September uh, meeting. Okay. Um, so, for, for the folks at home and for those who are here tonight, I want to explain we're handling this just a little bit differently. Uh, typically, uh, as you all remember, uh, the issue of the uh, Homeland Security Grant uh, was tabled. There was not a vote last month. So what I've done is I've asked that this be put on a separate item first so that we can discuss that in a good public debate, and then we'll get into public hearings. So if you are here for one of the uh, public hearings in the future, um, A through I, please be patient and we will get to you soon, okay? So with that, um, Madam Clerk, if you could read item 25, please. It's a resolution accepting and appropriating $258,024 in unmatched grant funds from the Office of Domestic Preparedness, State Homeland Security Program, and Law Enforcement Terrorism Prevention Program, funds to be designated for the purpose of purchasing a specialized response rescue vehicle. Thank you. And since this was actually a table for action in September, the Council Credit Vic, is somebody willing to uh, make a motion to take this off the table? So moved. We take this from the table. Second. Council Bennett has to be removed. We have a second from both. Council Grady, second, and Council Nine. Everybody has any questions? We move from the table. All favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you very much. I uh, said So we now have item 25 before us. Um, is there any, actually before we begin with a motion, I do want to uh, just remind everybody. So we have had the public hearing. The public hearing was closed. There were two individuals who did fill out pink cards. I'm not sure if they were able to testify last time. Uh, Ms. Powell and Ms. Edwards. Um, just want both the regular recognizing opposition to the item. I just want to let you know that you'll be, I'm going to give this to the clerk and you'll go to the record, okay? Mm -hmm. So, is there a motion? Move we'll approval. Second. Motion made and second to approve item 25. Is there a discussion? Council uh, Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, before I speak to uh, my vote, I would like to set the record straight because there had been some scuttlebutt uh, that the uh, police chief was uh, meeting with me to strong arm me to vote for the back here. That's totally untrue. I initiated the meeting because I wanted to ask the police chief uh, some very pertinent questions so that I could make an intelligent decision. Um, I want everybody to know that if every counselor has a perfect right to speak with department heads of the city manager about any issue. We don't make any decisions. There's only one-on-one. -on -one, uh, there's not a quorum of the council there to uh, speak with them. And uh, it's just for informational purposes. And we all come together and share the kinds of things that we learn. So I just wanted uh, to set the record straight because our police chief would never, ever do that. I am convinced. I have great respect for John DeVell and, uh, and for anybody to say that he would strong on a city councilor to make a decision is very, very out of line. So then I will say that I intend to vote in favor of accepting um, the federal money uh, to purchase the backhand. 
first of all, um, we are replacing, as it's been said many times, we're replacing a current um, piece of equipment that is failing. Um, secondly, um, I have great trust in our police department. Uh, the Bearcat is intended only for defensive purposes. There's no intent whatsoever of using it aggressively. Um, unfortunately, I, I agree that it's, it's too bad that we need something like the Bearcat. But with, when you look at Newtown, Connecticut, you look at the, the bombing at the <clears throat> Boston Marathon, all the incidents that happen, that can happen anywhere, obviously, we do need uh, to be defensive. It, it's too bad, but we need to be defensive. And I am in favor of, uh, of accepting this money and purchasing the beer cap. Thank you. Um, I have uh, reached an opposite conclusion. I will be voting against accepting the federal money. Um, just because we can doesn't mean we should. And I have become convinced through a variety of conversations that we have adequate resources at present time <coughs> to meet challenges that we may face. So I just want to indicate to the community that uh, I will be voting not to accept the money. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would echo the sentiments of Council Mayor. I've been on this council for 10 years. I've voted for a lot of grants. Uh, I do believe that this is something that uh, we do not need. Thank you very much. I believe that uh, we do not need this. I believe there are adequate resources within this community. Uh, and there's a beer cat available to us 25 miles away in Manchester. Another one available to us. Uh, about 25 miles north of us in Laconia. Uh, those three vehicles, I think, will give us coverage. Uh, so I will not be supporting this, and uh, I feel badly because I've been 10 years on this council. I just, uh, you know, this would be one of the hardest things for me to, you know, to vote against, but I feel as I have to. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yara. Uh, Yara, I think no matter how we on the council vote on this motion, I know we all appreciate the input from the uh, residents of New Hampshire, uh, whether the, the residents of Concha or not. It's uh, their testimony, their letters, their phone calls have been greatly appreciated and uh, and uh, they're taken into consideration. I'm going to vote for the motion. And my reason is I look out in the audience, I see one gentleman holding a sign that says, more Mayberry and less pollution. And I think that's a philosophy we all embrace. But we know the tragedy has befallen our state over the last decade or so. Uh, our major cities, including Concord, but also our small towns like uh, Coldbrook and Newbury, and most recently Greenland. I hope we never need to use this piece of equipment, but I'd be glad to know that our local law enforcement has it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to echo what Councilor Shirtleff said. Uh, the uh, public hearing we had last month was a very good public hearing. There was a lot of good input. Um, and uh, there are various ways you can view this issue. And I can understand uh, some of the sentiment that uh, brought out a lot of the crowd regarding the wording on the grant application. Uh, but uh, we've been given documentation to show, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Manager, that that wording has been redacted and changed. Uh, in the records of the Department of Safety removing any reference to a uh, free straight state project or any group such as that. Is that correct, Mr. Manager? That's correct. So given that, I mean, that was my concern, the grant application had those words in it, um, because we've never really had a problem like that. In my experience as a former prosecutor, our problems stem from domestic violence cases, uh, mental health issues, uh, just things that uh, pop up like that, individuals, uh, no groups ever that I ever would call being violent, uh, but certain individuals who, who take it upon themselves to create a chaotic situation, and as such, we can't have our police officers go into a situation unprotected. Uh, if my son at Concord High School is in a situation, if there's a hostage situation, I want to know that the Special Operations Unit is going to be available to go over there and rescue some, some of the kids that are over there. 
and that's another point. It's not the Concord Police Department. And I think a lot of people think that it's the Concord Police Department that's getting this grant and that's going to be owning this vehicle. Although the chief applied for the grant, that vehicle is going to be the property of the uh, Central Special Ops Unit. Uh, we pay $3,000 in dues, and all the 20 member communities who are part of that operations unit pay the $3,000 in dues. No matter how this vote goes tonight, that $3,000 will still be paid. There will be members of the Concord Police Department on the Special Ops Unit, as well as other members from different areas of law enforcement on that unit. And these communities span not just in Concord, but way up in uh, Grafton County. So if they need a vehicle available, we, we can say we've got one in Manchester. Uh, but somebody at Plymouth State University uh, can't say that. They're part of this unit as well. So the cost of maintenance, um, the cost of training, it's all covered by our dues. And uh, as I said, no matter how this vote goes, we'll continue to, to pay our dues because we need that unit in this region of the state. And uh, finally, we already have a vehicle anyway. This is really from my view placement of that vehicle for the special ops unit. So given all those situations and the uh, crime scenes I've had to uh, be involved in hour after hour, especially in the cold winter, when you just can't be exposed if you have a situation with an armed person or you need a vehicle and you need to get some shelter, I'm definitely going to be willing to do this. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. This has been a really difficult decision and ultimately I want to give my appreciation to the number of people that reached out to this community for petition signing or to gather input. I think that it's, it shows that this has been a huge civic discussion and it is truly appreciated. At the end of the day, I have to stand here and I have to vote for my ward. And my ward reached out tenfold to say, get this bear cat. One person called to say, please do not. Though, the neighborhood, the city has been peppered with our phone numbers. I would qualify that by saying two additional calls came in today for a total of three, but neither of those two were from my ward. It is very raw that we had two armed robberies in Ward 2, Ward 1. We've had two robberies at the Cumberland Farms, at the Dunkin' Donuts. We've had armed home invasions. The Hoyt incident, Hoyt Road incident, was right in our backyards. And we will not forget, and voters have not soon forgotten, voters, residents, have not forgotten the gentleman that took his wife's life and his own in Pentecook. That's what people are seeing at the forefront. And when they saw on those flyers that there were only two murders since 2004, they were wondering and asking me, what about Philip and Sarah? They lived in our neighborhood. They lived right off of Fisherville Road. And Mr. Gary could have shot those children right in our neighborhood. They could have shot him, or he could have shot them right at the 4th of July festivities. That's what I heard from my neighbors. That's what I heard from my friends and parents in the school district. And at the end of the day, this board is voting in favor of the Bearcat. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Anyone else? Councilor Sixth. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, like Councilor President, I, I certainly appreciate um, all the debate that's happened. And um, I'd like to say that I absolutely agree with those who expressed concerns about the militarization of our police departments across the country. Um, but um, I think these are really, really very valid concerns, but luckily Concord has a very long history of community policing, um, and uh, I respect the work that, that they do. Um, I think the fact that our current armor, armored vehicle, the Peacekeeper, that we've had for 30 years has only been used in the most extreme and rare circumstances is a testament to the type of police work that our community does. And when I look down Main Street, I see our officers on bikes not in the peacekeeper, and I think that's the way it should be, and I think that's the way it will continue to be. But our uh, current vehicle is old, it's retired, uh, we need a new one, we need a new one to keep uh, people safe, and this really could be uh, the difference between life and death in, in certain situations, and it's certainly my, my hope that this uh, new vehicle um, never has to be used, uh, but I, I think it's my moral and ethical obligation to vote in favor of providing all the tools that this city feels it's necessary to keep uh, our citizens and our officers safe. So I will be supporting this item. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I share your thoughts and, uh, and also uh, Councilor President's on this. Um, it, it was a very interesting uh, four weeks and um, educational wise and everything else, um, dealing with the rise of the warrior cop. Happened to uh, 
the uh, that was lent to me to read, and and I can certainly understand there's places in the country that um, the police have abused their authority. I haven't seen it in the country. I've lived here since 1971. I have the utmost respect for our, our Chief Gamal uh, and and his police department. I think they're very professional. I know they're very professional. Uh, the screening just to become a police officer in Concord is very rigorous, and uh, to become an officer of this in this city uh, is, is really, a, I think, a, a plumb position. And it's not based on being a warrior cop, but it's being a police officer and someone to defend uh, the citizens in Concord and um, just do, a, I think, a very fantastic job with it. As far as the, the purchase of the Bearcats, once understanding is that it's not a police, Concord police vehicle, but it's, it's uh, being used by a community, 20 communities. The cost that was a concern about the upkeep and maintenance. That's what people, that's a lot of people in Congress ask me about. And how much is this thing going to cost us and our taxpayer money? It's not. It's part of the uh, uh, three thousand dollars that we pay annually to, to belong. And uh, and so I'm voting for this. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I understand that. First of all, I want to have everybody understand and know that I completely support uh, Chief Duval. Some of them, I appreciate all the emails we received, the letters we received, I appreciate people going out and getting petitions. Um, but there were some comments that were made through email and, um, and mostly through email that I found that were unfounded towards our uh, Chief Duval. He's a very honorable man. We're lucky to have them here in the city. It's very lucky to have someone with his skills. And um, just because you might disagree on the Bearcat issue, I think um, we cannot, um, it's important to understand that he's a very capable um, chief of police, and we're very, very fortunate to have him in the city of Compton. <coughs> However, I do understand that this Bearcat is a defensive vehicle. However, I think the community is there's confusion in the community about exactly what this vehicle is, and I will not be supporting the Bearcat. I agree with Council Warren and Council Bennett that we have other vehicles like this um, at, at our access, that if we do need to use the, uh, um, a vehicle like this, that we have access to it. We have our own state homeland security division. I have received phone calls, and my phone calls have been not to support the Bearcat. I've had more people stop me and ask me not to support it for very, very different, for different reasons. And for those reasons, I find that, you know, we're, wherever we stand, I think all of us are taking votes um, that we feel are moral and ethical. I do have to say, though, that a lot of the voices of our neighbors are getting drowned out through um, certain uh, organizations that come. and. Um, and although um, some voices are louder than others, a lot of our neighbors have quieter voices and just have concerns that they just don't think this is something they need to see um, City of Concord have. And although we've never used it and all our chiefs have never used it against people, peaceful protests, it's not something they think that we need as a community, even though it, you know, we share it with 20 others. So with all the respect, I'll be voting against it. This vote does require a two-thirds vote, and we have been requested to vote. Uh, we'll call the count. We'll start with Councilor Hall. Yes. Councilor Della Iacono. Yes. Councilor Grady Sexton. Yes. Councilor Cage. Yes. Councilor Kredovic. Yes. Councilor McClure. Yes. Councilor Nyan. Yes. Councilor Patton. No. Councilor St. Clair. Yes. Councilor Shirtlet. Yes. Councilor Werner. No. Councilor Bennett. No. Councilor Winter. Yes. Councilor Bouchard? No. Mayor Boulay? Uh, yes. Passes 11 4. Motion is adopted 11 4. Thank you very much, everyone. We're glad everyone came, and thank you for all the work that you put into uh, that song.